This is um, a new article courtesy of Vice that's been causing a little bit of bother online, especially in the dance music scene that I'm kind of involved in and a fan of. And this is regarding Beat Poor and their conduct um, with their staff members and whatnot. And this is uh, courtesy of Vice. The title is Former Beat Poor Employees Alleged Toxic Workplace Where Fear Roared. Uh, the powerhouse dance music retailer preached um, exclusivity and diversity, but ex-staffers say bullying, sexism and casual racism was per was pervasive. This is an article written by Annabella Ross who you most guys would know for writing some really cool and scathing articles concerning some people within dance music and just exposing the kind of rotten underbelly that seems to perpetuate um, this scene and seems to kind of make it a little bit unfun to kind of be um, associated with but essentially it's quite hilarious anyway because you know all this stuff that people were doing in terms of you know pretending that they were you know for inclusivity and diversity i don't think anyone with actual actual brains would actually believe any of this stuff especially if it's a big business that's got massive turnover and is you know generating loads of money and high revenue whatever it may be i thought these were always buzzwords whenever a brand you know pops up a logo or a flipping um, vinyl letter sticker outside of their shop window with the lgbt plus colorways and stuff i never think that they you know i never think that they've completely rid of their company of bigotry of you know um homophobia or whatever it may be i just think it's them trying their best to uh acclimate to this new society that we live in where people in general don't really stand for no lack of public inclusivity whether it happens behind the scenes and stuff they don't stand for it publicly they kind of react to it very negatively so in order to protect themselves and inoculate themselves from any kind of backlash they put a flag up they paint something they give you a pin whatever it may be just so you leave them alone they're essentially signs or badges to please look I'm, I'm obeying you guys I'm agreeing what you guys say leave us alone don't hassle me let me run my business but they don't essentially um, represent the thoughts feelings ideas point of views way of life um, acceptance of people that run the company at all zero i get no insight about what the company's culture or what they stand for at all because they decide to you know put a black square on their feed or have a rainbow flag somewhere on their window it just doesn't make any sense i never thought that was the case but if people did think that was the case and they were living in la la land then i'm sorry that your reality has been shattered but anyway this is courtesy of vice so it says as follows it says it was june 24 2020 ava a label manager at the online music electronic uh store beatport was dreading an up and coming zoom meeting on the company's social activism <laughs> I don't know people who work in companies where you have to talk about politics and stuff and get involved in this kind of stuff. But I personally don't think it's the right way to go about things personally, because I don't think it's the right way to go about it. You're always going to offend somebody. Somebody's always going to think that you're not doing enough. And in general, I just don't think it's the place for businesses or corporations to try to get themselves involved in social issues to that extent. If you want to, you know, lend some money you want to start up an initiative whatever it may be so be it but conversating and talking about the world's problem at a workplace it just serves no purpose whatsoever because for the most part there's very very little businesses like beatport can do for the wider problems that you know um, pollute our world at the moment what can they do about systemic racism really what can they do about um police brutality really what can they do like not much they can bring attention to things that we see in the news and whatnot but are you really going to be poor to find out about another cop that killed another black kid probably not you're going there to try your best to kind of unplug from the daily horrors of life you don't want to go there and be reminded again about some horrible thing that you saw online because who can stand that who can stand to be completely be bombarded with horror after horror after horror i can't i know i can't i know it's horrible to see we all saw the images of george floyd we know how terrible that was we don't want to again perpetuate that at work again who wants to go through that i don't know what workplaces you work at but usually when something terrible happens in the news you don't spend the entire day talking about it at work you might talk about it in the morning but then by the afternoon you kind of want to forget about it and just talk about your weekend talk about you're gonna go on a holiday talk about how your boyfriend's hassling you whatever it may be anything but what's going on in politics but some people i guess just have that thing about them where everything they do is political everything they do has to be political and i think that is really the worst way to go about things i think if anything especially for people who are already bigoted this actually turns them against you this actually makes them less sympathetic or less sympathetic to your point of view and to what you want to do and the changes you want to make they don't understand it because they can't you know they can't even get where you're coming from anyway and now you're annoying them it just doesn't make any sense so imagine setting up a zoom meeting with your superiors about social activism it just seems 
insane to me. But anyway, continue. Ava's name has been changed to protect her privacy. Okay, cool. Completely air out a company, maybe you know, effectively, maybe in some way affect their flipping stock price, maybe put people's jobs at risk because you're, you know, tarnish them with the brush and making them look like they might be bigots and racists and whatnot, but then hide my name. <laughs> it's like, come on. Anyway, let's continue. Like many companies suddenly grappling with George Floyd's protest, Beatport was exploring what it could do to improve its approach to issues and race and diversity. Um, Ava, one of the few black employees at Beatport's Berlin office. Yo, how many people... How many black people even live in Berlin in the first place? Why even mention that? How many black people live in Berlin? How many black people that live in Berlin are actually into dance music? How many of those people who are into dance music want to work in the dance music industry? Like, the fact that they're mentioning it as if they're meant to have, like, 100 black people are working in there is nuts. There's not even 100 flipping... Are there even 100 top DJs that are black in the industry, in the scene anyway? Can you think of them? 100 hundred of off the off rip like that play all the time not the old ones like ones are like let's say ones who are like 18 to 35 are there a hundred anyway out there and I'm, no light-skinned people are mixed race involved no one pretty also black like me like do they are they even a hundred i don't think so <laughs> so the fact that they're pointing it out like this is just really weird but hey let's continue um one of the few black employees at beatport's office was among the approximately approximately sorry eight staff members from the german and american offices attended the department meeting with ceo rob mcdaniels i'd guess rob mcdaniels doesn't sound like somebody who's from the culture but let's continue um after floyd's death ava had been talking with her peers and other music companies including soundcloud and spotify ava ava's going in there and infecting every company with this rhetoric i mean jesus christ i felt that people's response was lagging behind those of the rest of the industry like what do, what do you want to say um on Honestly, I'd rather they said nothing than that black square. That black square was so insulting, incredibly insulting. And most of those companies that were putting the black square up, what have they done since then? Absolutely jack shit. That's what they've done, jack shit. It continues. On May 3rd, 2020, she emailed McDaniels. It's, I thought it was McDonald's. Actually. She emailed McDaniels, who joined Beatport CEO um, in 2017, to ask him how the company intended to address the Black Lives Matter protest. In a phone conversation later that day, Ava said McDaniels told her that Beatport wouldn't post about BLM on social media because they felt that it would alienate their core customer base. <laughs> Who's your core customer base, mate? Fucking... <laughs> Aryan race why does he think it's going to alienate their core customer base like that's a mad response <laughs> okay now maybe I'm on Ava's side here in response to Ava's claim McDaniels told Vice that he never said he was worried about putting off customers with probial in post but that he sought not he sought out input from others as to whether or not a customers and communities saw it as a role you see that's what usually happens in most companies. Usually, the most senior. That's why you should. That's why you should always respect your bosses and senior people in your company um, on a case by case basis. Don't respect people just off base of their title and their seniority alone, because most of them are pussies. This guy is a CEO of a company, right? I know he's not there from the start, but he's a CEO, and he's essentially passing the blame to others in the company not taking responsibility for his words or what he might have said or maybe trying to clarify what he said he's saying other people told me not to do it that's why i didn't do it the ceo is doing this i know it's a hot button topic and he's a bit scared but this goes to prove that you should never ever lick the ass or suck the dick of people based on their title or how much they earn in a job especially when you're in these kind of industries you want to get a promotion you feel like you have to suck no 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 try to get to those positions by just your hard work and your diligence and your talent alone don't try and do all that pally pally stuff because for the most part these senior people are just dickheads they're just there because they've, they're older than you and they have more experience whatnot or they've kind of they know more people in the industry but it's not exactly that they are based on merit and skill alone and most of them you know don't do much anyway day to day they come in late they leave early like just take the piss you know what i mean Look at this guy, CEO, and he's flipping blaming other people. If if you if you said what you said, stand on it. Don't now try and blame others. Anyway, continues. On the call, Ava said she pointed out to McDaniel's that two two beat ports, highest selling musical genres were house and techno, originated from black and LGBT communities. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. The house and techno that's sold on fucking Beatport is not black and LGBTQ friendly at all. It's not. Let's be honest. The people that play those type of music are not even black or LGBT themselves. The audiences they play for are not black and LGBTQ. Like, let's just be fair. Maybe the origins, okay, fair enough. But the music sold on Beatport. Let's be honest, man. This is not hard wax. This is Beatport. Oh, fucking hell. Anyway, it continues. 
the quote says, it felt like I was giving the CEO an elementary history lesson about black origins and techno. I know that his CEO is a bit of a pussy, but imagine being lectured to by one of your subordinates about black history. Honestly, man, this stuff is hilarious to me. Anyway, let's continue. Said Ava, noting that Daniels, McDaniels did not seem to know of the Bill Bill Free of the Belleville Free, sorry, the innovator, the inventors of Tech Digital Techno. I don't think most people actually let me let me ask my own audience here. Do any of you people know who the Belleville Free are? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you know who the Belleville Free are, can you name them? Name each of them. First name and last name, please. It continues. I also had to explain how techno was inherently political when it was adopted by white spaces after the fall of the Berlin Wall. He did not seem to know. Oh my God. My head's hurting, man. My head is literally hurting at this shit. The Belleville Free was made up of the... Okay, we're going to skip that because I want you to say it in the comments. Um, the nine days, they made the trips to Detroit and burgeoning Chicago music. Okay, they gave us a history lesson on there. A challenging conversation about Okay, let's continue. As challenging conversations about systemic racism unfurled across the world, Ava found it galling that the beat pool was profiting from the marginalized peers, pioneers of the scene. Oh my God, man. Oh my God. I'd love to know how much, how many tunes from the Belleville Free beat pool even sells on a day to day basis. It's probably not a lot. Most people that are going on there are basically buying fucking a MIDI lens techno. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to go buy Belleville Free techno. Let's, be, let's call a spade a spade. Anyway, while appearing to not want to say or do anything that might alienate people's core, <laughs> this is crazy, man. The fact that he said I don't want to alienate my audience is hilarious. That means he's basically saying what? He doesn't want to alienate the tech house bros. Are all tech house bros Tories? That's really strange, isn't it? That you'd think, anyway, this is People's core customer base are straight white bros, as she remembered it. McDaniel seemed to get defensive about the invocation of black music history, retro, uh, ret ret retorting that he knew black people were involved. <laughs> I know some of you blacks like a bit like, like a bit of the techno as well. Trust me, I know, I know. I worked with a couple of black people in the scene. <laughs> I would never say something as ignorant as that. McDaniel's wrote for Vice, calling the allegation false. When McDaniel's was asked by Vice if he was familiar with the Belleville Free, he said that he wasn't, but that he knew the origins of house and techno in Chicago and Detroit, and that he was, and that there are sounds of the streets of black neighborhoods. <laughs> Let me read that again. The origins of House of Techno in Chicago and Detroit, and that these are the sounds of the streets in black neighborhoods. Yo, <laughs> this guy. Honestly, it's honestly on you if you go to apply for a job at these places and you allow yourself to be subjected to this nonsense around these people. These are the kind of people who, if you came in with your hair braided, will start touching it, asking you questions. Is it yours? How long did it take? That looks really good. I should maybe get it. What does it smell like? Like all that nonsense, right? These are the type of people that we do in that stuff too. These type of people where if someone got stabbed, they'll be asking you about what your feelings are about it, even if you don't know who the person was. They'll be talking about like, I don't know, nonsense, kind of like Chad bro humor about spices and seasoning and all that nonsense and shit like just really n annoying lame conversations so the fact that you would allow yourself to work i know people have to work in and earn a salary but this already you know i don't think people like this they don't turn into these guys you for sure have heard some of their you know quips and sayings beforehand before the whole george floyd thing happened in the first place or the george floyd tragedy happened i don't think these guys turn into these donuts overnight i don't think so these guys are like this from from day dot but oh my god man these guys are awesome anyway he later sent a follow-up email writing i googled <laughs> Honestly, the fact that somebody that runs, don't you find it hilarious? The fact that somebody runs the biggest online dance music um, platform in terms of selling music in the world has no idea who the Belleville Free are is legitimately insane. And the fact that he would admit to Vice that he had to Google it is wild. Immediately, it felt like a dummy because of course I know. Okay, cool. I just forgot their names. I forgot the name of the group. Yeah, okay, sure, mate. <laughs> anyway, in May 30, 2020, email to Ava McDaniels thanked her for an earlier chat and reading she had provided. So this Ava girl sent her CEO article links and readings for him to kind of get read up on on why it's important to maybe respect black voices in dance music. <laughs> you should, at that point, you should just quit. You really should just quit. Like, why are you sending this guy articles so that he could be less racist? I don't know. Let's continue. Or ignorant or whatever. Suggested, um, and suggested setting up interviews with influential DJs to talk about their experiences with racial injustice and promote on people's social channels. Oh my 
days. He ended the email with a post with a postscript that says, "PSA: CEO friend just sent this and sent me this, including a link to a YouTube video called Life of Privilege Explained in Hundred in a Hundred Dollar Race." In the viral video, Adam Doyne, a white Christian educator, asks a group of young people to step forward each time they can answer yes to a question about their background. Take two steps forward if you grew up with a father figure in your home. Eventually, the demonstrations of privilege. Black students were visibly segregated at the back, and white students at the front. The video that Daniels wrote is a good summary of the underlying systemic issues and protest and violence that don't solve these oh my god the fact that a grown adult that runs a company or that is a ceo of a company of beatport has no idea what systemic racism is again you don't need to agree with it but the fact that you don't know what it is or how it can affect different marginalized groups is insane the fact that you need a youtube video to tell you this and it's probably what i'm gonna say mcdaniels is at tops 50 years old tops tops 50 years old so running an online platform like Beatport is predominantly online. It's social media heavy. You have to be somewhat plugged into kind of youth culture and what's going on online and society and shit. It's not like you're running a fucking newspaper. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that he has no idea what systemic racism is and he had to get sent some viral video that was trending on YouTube to fight, to kind of get explained to him in dummy terms is says everything about the guy. So I don't know why Ava stayed there so long at the company, to be honest. I would have left ASAP. This is absolutely insane. Legitimately one of the most insane articles I've ever read in my entire life. But it also goes to show, like, in general, all this talk about exclusivity in the scene and stuff is what is a waste of time because most of these guys don't care. Most of these guys don't know. And most of these guys just, I don't know, live in their own bubble. So it's less really a, a conversation about respecting the history of black contributions to this culture and whatnot. And we founded it. It's less about that and, that. and it's more so about, hey, let's just try to get involved. Let's also try to get a piece. Because, you know, for myself, I think there's a viral tweet going around where somebody was like saying, oh, why is it that, you know, all the, all the light skinned girls basically get to be DJs? We don't see many dark skinned girls in it. And it could be applied to men also, right? In general, right? You, you see a lot of the good looking mixed race light skin dudes who basically look like male models being able to, pro, you know, DJ and professionally in a very short space of time. While people who look myself are not really that, you know, um, common when you look at some of the big lineups in some of the big places around the world. Now, again, like I said before, it's mostly a selection thing, right? I'm sure there's probably not that many DJs out there who are black who play that type of music in those kind of places in the first place. I'm assuming it's a small pool, but still the fact that those places, you know, promote themselves to be bastions of inscrutivity and diversity and representation, it is a bit weird when some of those spaces only have a very whitewashed lineup, especially also when you think about the audiences that go to their parties parties you think about the people that attend the raves and shit and it's all just meh do you know what I mean so I think of the possession party that went to an E1 a while back and you know the crowd was very diverse right very um a, a melange of people from all over the world from different sexual orientations you know the way they kind of um uh, I'm sure pronouns whatever it may be right all over the world all over the place but the lineup was very whitewashed it would it didn't really represent the crowd at all and that happens a lot in a lot of dance music festivals even think of something like um Tomorrowland the amount of girls that go to Tomorrowland is quite plentiful there's a lot of Instagram accounts dedicated to just celebrating all the sexy girls that go to Tomorrowland but how many girls have you ever seen play at Tomorrowland apart from the usual the usual lot the charlotte the wits and amy the lens amy lens and amelia lens and stuff there's not many so even places like that where they cater to like a predominantly european audience they also don't even you know in include gen other genders apart from men <laughs> i mean it's always just men playing for a cascade of girls who are scantily clad and whatnot but you would imagine a place like that if they ha if they actually propped up some girls who are part of the local scene who are up and coming it would actually make the festival far better any other experience um for sure but hey this is what it is what do i know what do i know it continues it says by the time the june 24th meeting commenced ava was on edge her fears were real okay all this happened before the meeting all this happened before that incredible Zoom meeting. Oh my God. Her fears were realized when a conversation on systemic racism veered towards slave trade and colonialism. Yo, if I'm going to work and I'm, and I'm in a Slack or I'm in a Zoom call and you start talking about the slave trade and colonialism, I'm closing that window. Send as many emails as you want. Send me as many DMs. Are you online? Are you online? I'm closing that window and I might even go and appear offline. I'm not being lectured to or being subjected to a conversation about the slave trade at my place of work. 
generally most of us don't even want to work right we only work because we have to pay the bills we have to keep a roof over our head so we do it our pure necessity right Ob obligation to our family to our friends whatever it may be to ourselves we don't do it because we love to do it some of us have the privilege of being able to work in a company or in a you know have a vocation that we actually love but most of us do it only to pay the bills so if you think i'm going to be somewhere where i only have to pay only there to because i got to pay the bills and i want to sit there and talk about you know the slave trade and shit you are having a laugh mate you're having a laugh you want you want me to sit there and talk about uh, the latest flipping to hunt tanahisi coast article fuck off um he said that african tribesmen have been killing <gasps> oh my god he said the african tribesmen had been killing each other since the dawn of day she recorded so basically what, what is honestly yo this is like this is definitely blue lives matter this is definitely giving blue lives matter this is definitely giving um you know black people should stop having you know black women should stop having babies and shit um you know black people kill more black people than white people do this is like those republican <laughs> right wing talking points um she recorded it, said, it was a it was a more stunning to Ava that the CEO's comments came in the midst of a meeting um, ostensibly meant to in part to address Beatport's response to the ex extrajudicial violence um, against black people. OK, this is what I don't like. Often arising from demon stereotypes and them really violent. You can't ask your company to talk about, you know, violence against black people in, polit in politics now at the moment in society and then get mystified when the response is something crazy like this, because they're in this again. They're nuts, but they're, they're in the same universe, these, these comments. They're in the same universe. They're obviously on different sides of the universe, but definitely in the same universe. Um, I'm just surprised that he'd say it so brazenly. I Ava felt that her face burning. She asked McDaniels to name these African tribes. <laughs> he just said that he was a history expert, and she recounted, um, he said, have you watched, he probably said, have you watched Toby as a Slave? <laughs> she didn't say much for that at the rest of the meeting i'm surprised he didn't say like more african tribes sold african tribes sold out their own people more than white people hurt black people i don't know oh my god mcdaniel's told advice that this recollection was completely false okay so she made up everything he said he did not single out african tribesmen and that he thought the conversation was about protests in colombia what and within the context of violence happening everywhere in the world south africa unfortunately is not immune to that so he's saying because there's protests in Colombia, it means Africa shouldn't be what? Oh, yo, this guy is... Honestly, this guy is the CEO of Beatport. Anything's possible. That's what I'm saying. That, that's why sometimes it's good we have these people in society. The likes of him, it sounds like. The likes of Boris Johnson, the Donald Trump. Say what you want about them as political people, but whatnot. But just in terms of them you know, and their kind of intellect and whatnot, it's nice to see because they occupy the highest positions in the world or in society, yet they're absolute oaths. So it should give you hope in wherever you're, where, wherever field of work you're in, that you can achieve great things. Because if they can do it, if you can become CEO of Beatport, what's stopping you from becoming an area manager of whatever store you're working in or general manager here or head of this or whatever it may be, you can always progress upwards because there are generally so many dummies occupying crazy roles. It doesn't even make any sense. Because I, I would beggar, beggar, I, I really would debate and I'd really not believe that this guy being this dumb is somehow super smart in his role. I'm assuming his um, ignorance and his dumbness definitely seeps into his day-to-day -day work for sure. There's no way you can turn it on and off. You can't be talking about African tribesmen and shit <laughs> and blaming them for systemic racism and also then go and do your job and be a really high class, top of the tier CEO that's been headhunted by all the big companies. It doesn't happen that way. He's probably an idiot as well when it comes to generally working in his own role i'm sure of it anyway continued by another colleague tracy whose name has been changed for privacy reasons was also in a meeting and supported ava's recollection she remembered being so shocked that she almost didn't believe her ears until after ava asked mcdaniels to name the tribes i was like fuck this is real she said what is what is this kind of view like so dated um <sighs> Sounds somebody that's not like somebody who might have a black boyfriend. Anyway, it continues. After the meeting, Tracy said that Ava reached out to her on Slack to vent about what happened. <laughs> Imagine the, the conversation you're having after on Slack when someone says that. She said, I can't believe this. This is what it's like. Okay. What is this? What I heard? This is true. That's McDaniels, of course. 
Um, for those seeking a career in industry, getting a job at Beat Port felt like scoring a golden ticket. In 2004, the company was established in Denver um, as the first online electronic music store um, of its kind. Employees, many of its hobbyist DJs and music enthusiasts were often starry eyed at the prospect of leaving and breathing electronic music. Duh, duh, duh. As a 24 year old new to Berlin who didn't, wouldn't want to work in a place like Beat Port, said Brie, whose name has been changed. As cheesy as it sounds, it was a dream job. I love music, I love meeting people in music, love traveling to clubs and seeing artists, and this job that I was promised on paper sound like it would allow me to do all these things be put as industry leader <laughs> there's also a part of me just to pause there's also a part of me that thinks that this is a little bit insane to be complaining about right the fact that your workplace isn't politically again what what they're saying is nuts what they're saying is obviously abhorrent it's obviously ignorant it's obviously bigoted it's obviously racist it's obviously insane right clearly we all know this let's not beat around the bush it's clear easy point to make duh but it's also a bit insane, given the given the climate that we're in at the moment, given the levels of unemployment, given how hard it is out there to get a job, right? I know from myself and my own experience, um, it took me a while to find a job that I finally have at the moment. I was unemployed for the you know for the majority of the first part of the fucking pandemic, and it was awful, especially when we were under lockdown and there was nowhere to go. You had to sit in your own apartment, house, room, whatever it may be, for hours on end, staring at yourself, not getting haircuts, looking horrible, ordering Uber Eats and shit, and living off savings. It was horrible, horrid, 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 horrid. Mentally, physically, everything, spiritually, it was disgusting. So when you did finally end up getting a job it was a real score and it really kind of i think that experience for me anyway changed how i saw employment i think i always saw employment as like a means to an end i always kind of saw it as like a no i'm just doing this for the time being because i'm going to end up doing my creative thing that i want to do and this is something i don't really take too seriously and i think most people who are involved in the arts and entertainment and stuff have that general view when it comes to their day-to-day -day employment but then when i wasn't employed for a while i then suddenly switched and flipped and was like no 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 this is my bread and butter. This is the thing that's legitimately given me the ability to do the things that I want to do in terms of entertainment, in terms of booking shows, making things, whatever it may be. So I'm going to treat this and I'm not, I'm going to treat this with care. I'm not going to take this for granted. I'm going to make sure I do my very best to be the best employee or colleague I can be so I can keep this job for as long as possible so that I have the ability to continue doing my other stuff outside of work. And then whenever that pops off, it pops off, but it's not like you're, treating it like whatever and then you're in the hope that that thing goes off whenever because it takes a while for your kind of like side gig to pick up and get where it needs to get to and i think most people have had that sort of shift so for somebody who's extra privileged who has not only got a job but also got a job at one of the premier you know companies within the dance music scene a small niche right but one of the biggest platforms out there um that's monopolized the entire industry for the most part right i'm not surprised record stores even exist with the amount of inventory and tunes and whatnot that flipping beat port you know has on their platform and the amount of money has obviously been invested in it it's, it's a very easy site to use and all that sort of stuff all that stuff costs money so to be in this time to be in this um to be in that position and to sit there and, and complain about your boss essentially being a bit of a donut uh being a bit of a dinosaur and being a little bit of a dick and an oaf is a little bit wild because we haven't heard anyone saying anything about them stopping them getting promotions. We haven't heard anyone talking about, you know, working conditions being awful. All we've heard is that when they tried to bring up race and politics post George Floyd, management responded negatively, responded badly, didn't really represent their views, blah, 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 blah. But we haven't heard anything that really affected their work. I know people say, oh, that doesn't affect their work. No, no. In terms of stopping their progression, in terms of not giving them space to grow, to learn, to ask questions, and, you know, to feel empowered, blah, 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 all those buzzwords we haven't heard that all we've heard is that the management didn't really feel too tough didn't feel too you know great about blm and now in the 2020 world there's many black people out there that also don't feel too great about blm either right and um, you only have to look at the recent expose behind the founders and how they misuse the funds allegedly and stuff it's not really the most um um it's not, it doesn't really have the cleanest image nowadays either itself so it's all a bit murky but part of me does feel like it's a little bit not to even say disrespectful it just feels a little bit weird to be complaining about stuff like this now given what's happening in the world it just feels like a weird time to bring this up this is something that should have been brought up within the the time post george floyd around that same year right but now it just feels a little bit like what is the intention what is the point of this in the first place what do they want to do overhaul the entirety of the management behind people and have people that represent 
them more running it and stuff day to day will they be able to sustain that company will they be able to keep that that train rolling i don't know like how much does it generate here it says total revenue was 441 million in 2020 that's a serious business so maybe these guys are dickheads when it comes to knowledge on societal issues but when it comes to business they know what they might be doing who knows to replace them with people that you might think are more inclusive and representative will that necessarily make the company profitable will it maybe affect people's jobs going forward in the future i don't know it just feels a little bit weird i just gotta be honest because they were saying it's a dream job but they don't represent their views um in terms of political and societal it's just like i don't think you're ever going to get that everywhere in life and i think you have to decide especially when you're an adult um where you separate because the same thing with having family members you have we all have family members who have some really crazy views who have who are definitely not left-leaning um, but you learn to live with them you learn to put up with them for the most part if you're a grown-up if you're not a grown-up you, you throw a hissy fear and you're like i'm not talking to you again i know many people in the states did that right when trump was in office when they found out their family members voted for him and whatnot some of them haven't spoken to each other in years and i think that's ridiculous i mean to be not talking to your flipping family members because they voted for a guy it's like nonsense but for the most part you learn to live with it so i don't know i just don't like this complaining i don't like it all in the slightest about jobs especially when people are suffering out there like it's just i don't know anyway continue to scroll by that one uh recently but yeah but, but, uh, promote image yes anyway that was a funny bit right but the other funny bit i thought was really hilarious was this courtesy of ra it says the black artist database suspends partnership with beat pool following allegations of racism bullying and sexism i just find it hilarious that a platform like the black artist database which is called bad um acronym didn't do any due diligence, no research, no auditing, nothing behind the scenes to find out who they were aligning themselves with in the first place when it came to setting up the black artist database or having it integrated with Beatport. It's absolutely insane. But it's also hilarious that Beatport would, essentially, would, would really run at the opportunity and snap um, the black artist database's hands off to get linked up with them because they knew behind the scenes what people without running it are really about so this was a great way to kind of like you know inoculate them in terms of pr wise and make them look like they're inclusive and that they are with the culture and they're with everything they know what's going on bloody blah 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 but behind the scenes they're doing what their annabelle ross article said i find that fucking hilarious like really really hilarious anyways it's courtesy of ra it said the uh, black eyes database has suspended its relationship with beatport um editorial arm beat portal with immediate effect uh bad release a statement earlier today august 24th via instagram the decision was made in response to a Vice article yesterday that details allegations of workplace racism, bullying, and sexism at Beatport. Um, the, the launched in October 2021, Bad and Beatport's relationship began with the Beatport integration of Bad on August the first. Bad co-founder Nix launched a month-long guest editorial ship on Beatport with this letter. August cover star was Black Rave Culture. The Vice article read Annabelle Ross accuses the several men in leadership position of Beatport, including CEO Robert Daniels and Chief Revenue Officer Jonas Temple and former Berlin Officer General Manager Terry, whatever his name is, of casual racism, bullying, and misogynistic behavior towards staff. Right, cool. The accusers accept some of the allegations and not others. And then you look at what um, what beat poor is, what bad is about, right? Because I, I, I didn't really know too much about them. I remember seeing their name featured in places, but I didn't know too much about them. So it's as follows. Their mission statement. Black Artist Database, formerly known as Black Bandcamp, which is absolutely insane when you think about what Bandcamp is about, right? What Bandcamp's about, when I remember it, um, was that it was meant to be a platform where artists receive the most royalty in terms of percentage right because i guess if you go and stream an artist's music on spotify they get a really small percentage of the revenue that generated from those streams and same with apple music and whatnot but beatport bandicap sorry sold themselves under the premise that we only take like 20 percent and they get 80 or something along those kind of lines right um so you're essentially putting money directly into the artist's pocket by having this one-stop shop where you can shop many different artists many different genres blah 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 and it was always kind of, I feel like for me, represented the underground, the kind of alternative people, people who are non-commercial, which by proxy, I would imagine would be people of all walks of life. It wouldn't just be white people. So to think, to set up a platform and call it a black band camp is insane because it's as if like the niche of the niche, which is band camp, is still not enough to represent you. You need another thing to represent you. It's like you're, you're othering yourself again, but then you also want to be involved. It just, it just feels a bit backwards to me. It really does. But again, what do I know? It's a community-based platform hosting um, a wealth of international black-owned record labels, artists, producers, and bands. This crowdsource database provides an easy-to-search filter and directly support the creative output of black 
black artists globally via their online profiles. The database is continuous work in progress maintained by volunteers and paid administrators. It's hilarious in a way because this is the kind of thing that I would imagine like a festival like Field Day or something would get in trouble because they put a, a lineup out that was all white and then somebody involved in the booking team would search black DJs, they'd get black database and then go through people, just find someone cool that they could kind of see who's got dreads, who's got a tattoo, whatever, somebody, yeah, and then just book them. It wasn't based on anything about, you know, learning about the artist, do you actually like them, just kind of ticking off boxes, which is quite disgusting, I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? Especially for myself, being a black DJ myself, I'm like, would I be happy with being the token person on the lineup if it meant that I got to play? Because I, now I don't play at all, especially post-pandemic. Would I be okay with being tokenized or would I want to be only on a lineup on merit? And to be honest, as somebody who's bereft of bookings, who hasn't played a paid gig in months, somebody who was playing every single month before the pandemic, right? I would say on hand on heart that I would much rather play on merit than play based on my skin colour or my race or whatever. Honestly, there's no way that I'm ever going to be okay with being played just off the sake of my flipping race and whatnot, just as a token, even if it's going to be at Bergheim, even if it's going to be at fucking Dick Mantle, Boomtown, Houghton. No, I'd much rather get there off on merit of my skill, my application, my hard work, my diligence, my personality <clears throat> than my flipping race. Oh yeah, cool black guy, weird hair, he wears glasses, let's put him behind the booth. Fuck that, I don't want that. But some people do. And maybe that's a way to start. I don't know. But I just think it's really gross. Um, it's like a, 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 a library of... Like, imagine if a white person started one. Like, you just imagine the outrage. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just don't know. I don't know. The database was started um, as a community effort on the 4th of June as a black band camp on the 5th of May, June 21. The project launched as Black Day Artist Database, a move which will hope to expand the project's scale and scope. Da, 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 da. Right? Or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, I just think that's hilarious that they didn't do any research on Beatport and what they were about. But let's read um bad statement regarding all the stuff we've heard about Beatport. So Bad said as follows. They said In light of the allegations regarding the safety of Beatport's workplace for black <laughs> safety. <laughs> These words are funny because you think about what the guy said about black tribesmen. Oh, <laughs> it's not even black people's safety it should be his safety if he said that to me and he was in my face I'd headbutt him do you know what I mean it's not even our safety it's their safety like what black tra anyway let's continue um, black employees highlighted in the piece published by Vice yesterday alleging racist sexist and bullying behaviours by people's management black artists database is immediately suspending partnership between ourselves and beat portal pending further internal review once we have conducted our internal review we'll return with a further course of action so they haven't even made a final decision yet the money and the opportunity is so good that they're still hesitant to really pull the core completely i think that article is pretty solid i wouldn't you know maybe there's some embellishing here and there but i think generally what they said about the guys and the senior team and what they said around black lives matter and stuff is probably true right they probably think that way you would have to imagine so it's like it's no surprise really and it's like it's like rocking up to a guy at a tech house or even asking him about you know, if he believes in gay rights and shit, you might get some spicy responses. You should know that, right? But people that go to us kind of, it shouldn't be shocking to you. It shouldn't be, you know, whatever. Um, so the fact that they're not making a final decision now is pretty, pretty hilarious, but maybe they have, they have some procedures you have to go through, whatever. We draw significant support from the shared experiences of our community and we remain faithful to our goal of amplifying these voices and experiences. Um, further to the, those sentences just don't mean anything, can it? These kind of, what, is, what does that even mean? Like, what does that whole sentence? What does that whole sentence or paragraph mean, in general? What does it mean? Anyway, let's just continue. Um, further to this, we are very sad to announce that we have to cancel our plan. BAD presents the Carney Dance on the Saturday, Sunday, the twenty. <laughs> Oh, honestly, man, it's like for some reason, I always thought again, this is really bad to say, right? But I always thought to myself, you know, those white guys who are really into like ska and stuff. I don't know why, but I always thought to myself, like, it was always like a really funny ruse to like protect yourself against claims of racism, right? To be like, I'm into ska, I'm into reggae. Those like white guys that wear like Dr. Martens and have like long sideburns and shit and wear like green and like jeans and like track jackets and polos. It's like a weird kind of like offshoot of the Proud Boys. It's, it's, it's a Proud Boy before the Proud Boy, right? 
Like Proud Boys nowadays, you say, oh, I'm not racist. The founder of Proud Boys is black. You know, that kind of nonsense they say. I always thought um, the guys are into Sky and Reggae, the white dudes. I always like, but I know, I know they're not, but it was a bit weird to me. Those guys were like overly into Scar, Dub, Reggae and shit. Like, all right, relax, lad. But anyway, in the midst of the situation regarding Beatport, we were notified by the team at the glove that fits that our event could no longer run as planned due to a licensing issue. So allegedly, okay, but you know, let's. Con unfortunately, the timing has meant we were unable to secure another venue. So they wanted to keep it anyway. <sighs> let's keep reading. Um, we were unable to secure another venue as much as a care we applied to our event. So we have to make a decision to cancel. All purchase tickets will be refunded. Many thanks to the team at Glove That Fits um, for their work. And thanks to apologies to our guest DJs who are there, blah, 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 and our special guest. For any comments, questions, and complaints about any of the above, please contact K. And then what's the next slide? Cancelled, cancelled. So yeah, in conclusion, people have some very ignorant, um, somewhat bigoted and racist people that run their company, from what I can see there, right, clearly. People that are uneducated and oafs and just kind of ignorant of what's going on around the world. Um, it would be a, definitely a company that if I was working at, you know, it, those things would come up pretty soon when you're working at a company like that those guys are guys that talk about life in general they're going to be you know the people that people like that usually don't know how dumb they are so they'll definitely be spouting off the you know off the mouth about certain topics so you definitely get an idea who they are and if you if i was to hear what they would say in passing at like a bar or something i would definitely have quit you know what i mean it wouldn't take long especially if i'm that socially and politically minded you know i mean especially if that, that was kind of my whole world i would definitely have quit a long time ago so for them to finally pluck up the courage to speak about it now or for this part article to publish so long after everything that's happened with that it just seems a bit insane um i don't really see the point around it personally maybe they do want to manage your change and stuff going forward i don't really know but i think this would have been far more effective around the time the George floyd thing happened in the first place um, that would have been a big wider conversation to have nowadays it just feels a little bit insane if anything it makes the black artist database look a bit nuts that they didn't do any due diligence before you know lining up with the beat portal and all that nonsense it makes a person that was working at beat port look a bit nuts for standing around there for so long i'm not it doesn't even say in the article if they're still there at beat portal or beat port i'm not too sure it just makes everybody look insane and in general what it does is it does kind of highlight and kind of amplify the issue at hand is that in general in dance music most people don't care about this diversity of representation shit especially when it comes to in terms of politics and whatnot i don't think we're going to win that conversation i don't think we're going to convince them of it in general i think the best way to go about it is just to say we need more representation in dance music in general because the, 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 the artists and the people who are on the lineup need to be more reflective of the people that go to these events and that listen to their music, watch their streams and whatnot. You can't, like I said, at the possession event I went to in E1, that possession event I went to E1 was really diverse. There were so many people from all walks of life that attended it, people from all different types of countries. But for some reason, the lineup was very, um, I would say, whitewashed with the exception of Charlie Sparks. I think maybe in the lineup there was, you know, basically the same same opposition lineup that you always get and which is kind of kind of disappointing especially when you consider that they are they've essentially got the youth market by the bulls so we just want to see more representation same thing goes for awakening same things goes for the big festivals out there representation means highlighting people from other communities who aren't just a stereotypical white dudes that play these kind of things now i don't think that conversation should be a politically minded conversation because they just don't care it shouldn't be societal because they just don't care it should just be more so let's have the artists reflect the people that actually listen to this shit and maybe just maybe we might get them to listen maybe we might get them to listen but i think leading with this whole like politics black lives matter racism shit they just don't get it they really really don't because to them they feel like because black people exist and they're walking and breathing in the world it means racism doesn't exist you know what i mean they don't even like this guy didn't know what fucking systemic racism was he had to be sent a viral video of some challenge of stepping forward or stepping backwards to, to know what privilege he didn't even know what privilege was bro like are you insane you cannot believe these things fair enough but not being aware of what they are and the, play, and the role they play in society is absolutely nuts and i think now this might have explained or ex this should have exposed how most people are in these positions who work in these places and i think the general consensus about most people is that they'd much rather have these dance music spaces or platforms be an escape from the drudgery of everyday life they don't want to be subjected to you know lectures and all that stuff about black lives matter about societal things because it eventually just makes them feel shit and no one wants to make no one wants to be made to feel shit and then get told to turn around and you know change how they act it's just not going to work that way so just force 
just force the representation more so in terms of let's just get in more representative of the crowd that go to events and let's not make it political but i thought the article was absolutely insane the people to people that run it are absolutely nuts and if anything it gives me confidence that i can achieve whatever i can achieve if that guy is a ceo of fucking people mcdaniel sounds like an absolute cunt because <laughs> without saying but yeah check it out the article if you want yourself um i'll put the link the article back up here so you can check it it's from vice the title of it is as follows former people employees alleged a toxic workplace where fear ruled i'll put it in the flipping show notes so you can check it out sorry there it is on vice i'll check i'll put it out there so you can check it if you want i'll put it out there if you can check it